Hey guys, Jacqueline here, and right now I'm going to go over my inventory uh, that I created for my C Sharp 1 class I had to take this semester. Um, so this is what my form will look like. I have um, a bunch of things that you can pick up. Um, here's where your inventory is shown, and then you can look at items, and you can drop items. And then um, over here, each item says that you can take it, so you just press this take button. So I'm going to kind of show you. So you press start. And then it shows you a bunch of things that you can pick up, like in the room. And you have your inventory, which right now is blank, and you've got your look and drop button. So if we like take the candle, and we can click on the candle here, and click look. It says, it's a candle, looks half used, it didn't burn evenly, and one side is shorter than the other. Cool. And then if I also want to, I can click drop, and it'll put it back in the list over here. So I could take like a bunch of things. A piece of string, it looks like a thread from a piece of cloth drop the string. Um, so it just goes back and forth um, like that. So that's how it works and I'm going to go over um, how it works as well in the code. So um, if you are working in uh, Visual Studio with like these forms applications you get like this partial class um, from your form and this is where whenever you like want to add um, functionality to like the, the um, things that you put on here, so like the buttons, the checkboxes, all that. If you double click it, it'll create like a function in here that allows you to um, do something like this one, like start button, click. So this allows me to do something when I click that button. This function will get called. So um, that's kind of how I was working around with this. So on my start, I turn on, I turn off the items I need to turn off, like the start button. And then I turn on like everything that I need, so like the inventory label, um, I turn on um, the things that we can take, I also update their names, and then also like the look and drop button I turn on. And then this I have this function here called populate items, this is a function I created. Um, and inside here I just create some uh, items just real fast. This is done uh, purely hard coded, hard coded, so you can see like I'm literally creating an item, giving it a name, giving it a description, and then adding it to the world. Uh, normally, I would do something a bit more like fluid, so where, where it will um, uh, not be so like this is what's happening. Um, but I was um, running out of time, as well as um, this was a lot easier just to kind of get the idea out. Um, so then I have some functions here. We'll go over them in a second. Uh, when we click on the buttons, so next to the um, each item, so you see here, so we've generated these. Um, if you click these buttons, it calls these functions here. So take button one, take button two. And um, it sets, like so first I get an item I create a new item here and I set it equal to the items in world, uh, the first list. So the first thing in that list and then um, I call a function that I created on my player, which is a, a class that I created, um, which holds our inventory that says take item and drop item. So this is what handles the, um, the inventory uh, section. So like what's in here is I have this list of um, things and then uh, actually don't need either of those um, so I have this list that's inventory and then the uh, function just literally adds and removes items from the list and then I pass in the item that I want to add and remove uh, that was a lot easier for me um, instead of having to like do it out here just make it a little bit cleaner and then we remove it from the item in the world because we don't um, we don't want it in the world anymore since it's in our inventory. And then I update the items in the world list and I update my inventory as well. So that's what these are up here. So this one's the update item in world list. Uh, basically what I'm doing is going off of the count of the items in world. So if the count is zero, so if there's no items in the world, we're not going to show any of these um, things. So we're not going to show any of the items. So this here is a function I created, uh, hide item. It takes in a uh, label and a button. And all it does is hides both the label and button. Um, if it's if there's one thing in our list, then we're just going to show the one thing. If there's two, we'll show both of them. 
um, so on and so forth. I only have five items, and uh, again, this is kind of um, like brute force, I guess, like we're going to do it. So this is not like easily expandable, just because like what happens if you add six, then it won't do anything to the sixth one. Um, so uh, there's better ways to handle this, but um, just to get like the prototype up and going, I did it this way. Uh, and then my update inventory is basically the same thing as the other one. We're just, uh, depending on how many things we have in our inventory is what we'll display. So, um, and then I also added this like checkbox checked false when we update the list. That way nothing stays checked because if you press it, the drop again, it would drop the same item that was checked previous, even though, um, it was uh, a different thing that was checked. And then also, I don't want the item to be checked. Like, if we drop it, I want it to be gone. I don't want anything else to be checked. So that's why I kind of handled that that way. Um, and I do that for each thing. And then uh, I have the checkbox change. So when we select an item in our inventory, so going back to this, uh, if I take an item, like if I select this, it calls unchecked changed. So... Um, so here in my checkboxes, I'm just, whatever item we check, we're going to select that item and then we're going to uncheck all the other ones in case they're checked. And then we do that for each one. Um, although really this will still select the item even if we're unselecting it. So what we could do is say if, uh, checkbox one dot checked. Um, so if it's already checked, we're going to set select item equal to null. And then if it's not already checked, we're going to select the item. That way we can unselect the items. Uh, and I should, I'm going to have to update this for all of my check boxes. I think I only have five, so that's good. Um, so this one become one. This one become two. Um, yeah, so that way that's working better. Um, this one two. Okay, and then once we have all of these, uh, three? Am I on three? No, I'm on four. And this one will be three. And then this one, our fifth one, will be five and four. Okay. Cool. So now when we select it, it'll select it. Then we unselect it, it'll unselect it. Okay, cool, cool. And then um, if we click the drop button, so once we have something selected, um, like if we don't have anything selected, it just doesn't do anything. Oh, did it? It brought it. Oh, nice. Okay, well, it kind of broke it. All right, so what I tried to do is make it so if you didn't have anything selected, then um, you would, it wouldn't do anything. So, and then once you um, dropped it, it would create, put the selected item back to null. Um, and then finally we have our look click. Um, so once we click on look with an item selected, we can uh, know more about it and read its description. So basically what it does is when I click this, uh, uh, okay, I think I had this backwards because it gave me an error. It's not checked. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, right, so if it's not checked, we'll set it to null, I guess. Alright, try that again, so we can, alright, so yeah, so that works, okay. So now we have um, this here, so when we press look, it tells us like a uh, description of what it is. Um, and basically what how I'm handling all of this is with my item class. So I have an item class, um, a public class, and inside of it has the name and the description of each item. So wherever I need to get the item name, I'm just getting it from like the item itself. So I'm creating um, an item object 
and getting it directly off the object. That way it's a little bit more manageable. Alrighty, so that is my um, my code. Uh, I know for the video it's, it's not commented and um, for the um, requirements for a class it needs to be commented so I'm going to go ahead and comment this out um, on my own time uh, before I submit but um, that, that, that's basically how it all works and um, it looks pretty good I think the um, layout is good I'm just using the kind of the standard stuff just because uh, I think it looks the best for this kind of thing so Alrighty, uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions or comments below, um, is, you can drop them below, and then uh, I'll link the GitHub for the projects. So if you want to take a look at how I did what I did, you can um, you can download it and take a look. Have a wonderful day, guys.